In today's video, let's use an unknown feature of pixel layers to create a perfect pixelation. To pixelate an image, we could use the pixelate filter. This is a destructive action, so let me make a copy of the layer by duplicating with the command J shortcut. To apply the pixelate filter, we need to select it from the filters menu and we can find it under the distort section. If we set the slider value around 30, we get a nice pixelation effect. Even though this looks pretty good, it is not as soft and smooth as I would like to have it. So let me show you another way of pixelating an image. But before moving on, let's name the current layer. I'll make a new copy of the original layer and move this to the top. We will be using a pixel layer, so I will need to rasterize it first, which we can easily do by right-clicking on the Layers panel and selecting Rasterize and Trim. Now that we have a pixel layer, I'm going to shrink it quite a bit, to about 130 pixels. Just like with image layers, pixel layers in Affinity Photo actually keep their original dimensions and DPI when they are created. If I would enlarge this pixel layer back, notice how the quality is the same just as before. Let's undo the last resize and continue to even make it a bit more smaller, to around 60 pixels. When I rasterize this layer for the second time, Affinity Photo will now use the current pixel details. If I now enlarge it, notice how we get this nice smooth pixelated image. Pretty awesome. Let's quickly compare this with the layer below, which was generated using the pixelate filter. A pretty big difference. It depends on what you want to achieve, of course. Let's also name this layer for reference. The pixelated result contains a lot of color variations between the pixels. Here is a quick trick to lower the pixel color variations and make it in a sense more flat. I will duplicate the original again and move it to the top. This time, before rasterizing it, I'm going to add a bilateral blur filter to it from the filters button in the layers panel. By increasing the radius and lowering the threshold a tiny bit, we get a flat smoothened image. Now we can apply the same trick. Let's rasterize it and then make it smaller to until 60 pixels. Rasterize again and then restore to cover the canvas. Pretty nice. If we compare, notice how the new version looks a bit sharper because it has less color variations. So what is happening here? As mentioned, Affinity Photo stores the resolution and the DPI when a pixel layer is created. Notice how the DPI is set to 3 when it is selected. Because we didn't have enough pixels to fit on the canvas, the pixels are stretched by lowering the DPI. Or in other words, one pixel takes much more space now, with as a result a pixelated image. By changing the size of a pixel layer, the DPI is being adjusted. A cool experiment how this works out in practice is also clearly visible when we use the brush tool. I can create a new pixel layer and draw a circle with the brush tool on this new pixel layer. If I switch to the layer we enlarged and use the same brush and draw a similar circle, notice how the brush is pixelated. The same brush size is applied, however, because it has a very low DPI, the brush gets pixelated. I believe in the iPad version, the brush even gets bigger to make up for the DPI change. Anyway, let's undo this experiment. Suppose we want to restore the original size of the pixel layer. In the desktop version, the only way I know of is by correcting its DPI. We can do this by using the transform panel. In the iPad version, we can switch to percentage, but the desktop version does not have this option, so we need to calculate it manually. To correct the DPI, we first need to find the document's DPI. 
A simple way to find this out is by using the metadata panel. Remember, if this panel is not available, you can enable it from the window menu. In the metadata panel, let's select details and there we can see our X and Y resolution, which in most cases will be the same. So to correct this pixel layer to 100%, I can multiply the width and the height of the current DPI, which is 3, divided by the document DPI, which is 96. Because the width and the height are linked in my setup, changing the width automatically updates the height. And there we have our original size of the pixel layer. Pretty neat. The new DPI is now 102 and not 96. But this is due to rounding issues. Probably the initial DPI of 3 was not exactly 3. But this was quite an extreme example. In most cases you will end up with the correct DPI. In this case, we can manually resize to a DPI of 96 to get the original size. There we go. So you might wonder why I am pixelating images. Let me share with you why I pixelate images. And that is to find good color combinations for the gradient map. Because we have a low resolution image and less variation it is easier to see which colors work best on a gradient map. I can quickly experiment with color and color positions on the color map. Once a gradient map looks great on a pixelated layer, you can be sure that it will also look great on the original. So I have this gradient map which I think looks interesting. Let's turn off the pixelated layer and see its effect on the original. Pretty awesome. Gradient maps work best with a very low opacity to just tint your image or they can be used more creatively by applying them in overlay or soft light blend mode. That looks pretty cool. We can lower the opacity to make the effect a bit less strong and finally adjust the blend range so it gradually applies from the lower midtones to the highlights. Here is the before and here is the after. Pretty awesome. So this is one reason why I like to pixelate images. But I'm pretty sure you can think of many other reasons on why to pixelate images. Thank you again for watching and until the next video.